Since the second iteration of the John Wick series, when cinematographer Dan Lawson took over as director of photography, John Wick gained an almost atmospheric, colorful look, feel, and energy to the films that have leaned into that look and feel with each further iteration, resulting in the stunning large format look of John Wick Chapter 4 that lifts it from a typical blood-soaked action thriller to a sophisticated visual spectacle of a movie. So let's take a deeper look at the camera selection, wide-angle lenses, the carefully chosen color palettes and action scenes that were, as Lostin put it, played as wide as they could. Dan Lawson said that for John Wick Chapter 4, they really wanted to lean into going bigger, telling motionpictures.org that we wanted to make more powerful images of the characters, especially Keanu. To achieve that, they changed up their approach from the previous movies, opting to use an Airy LF, or large format camera, over their previous Super 35mm cameras. The Airy LF was released in March of 2018, over five years ago. And while it is not the largest sensor Airy offers in a camera, that belongs to the Aerie 65, it is still the second largest sensor size, which is slightly larger than full frame at 36.7 millimeters by 25.54 millimeters. So while they could have technically gone larger in terms of sensor size for this movie, the Alexa LF is still very much up to the task of large format filmmaking. There are a few benefits not using the Aerie 65 in this situation. For one, the body weighs about five to six pounds or about 2.2 kilograms lighter than the Aerie 65. And at the end of the day, there are only so many Aerie 65s in existence and you can only rent them. Now, why did Dan Lawson opt for using a larger format camera than a traditional Super 35? Well, in this instance, it's because he wanted to give Keanu Reeves more room to work with, which is a reason why some directors prefer to use large format cameras. Cinematographer James Laxton explains this in his two hour masterclass on large format cinematography, that when you shoot on a larger format camera, you give actors more space to move around and express themselves without sacrificing your preferred focal length and perspective. Whereas using Super 35 format options can at times force actors to stay within a box so they stay perfectly in frame. And we've linked to this masterclass below if you're interested to learn more. But many liken large format to a specific feeling. Laxon says that to me, it's all about immersiveness, the proximity from subject to lens, we are close enough to feel emotional connectivity. Large format also gives you this ability to go wider without actually going wider in focal length, getting the same look of a 50 millimeter lens on a super 35 millimeter camera, but wider as the larger the sensor gets, the wider your field of view becomes on any given lens, or should I say focal length. I've linked to an article by Manuel Lewebers if you want to go more in depth on crop factors, as many would call it, and the misconceptions around that. But many directors believe that this wider field of view gives the audience a higher sense of immersion, subconsciously feeling like it's closer to human vision than other film formats. It also has the addition of making your characters larger than life and adding that epic feeling to a movie. Now, I won't sit here and say that large format is superior to Super 35 format films, quite the contrary. I think that each film and cinematographer and director builds their own look, feel, and creative design and how they want to film a movie or series. And as always, understanding what each will give you and the pros and cons of both are always important. One style does not always work on every project. But for John Wick 4, with its larger than lifestyle, it makes sense to move to a large format camera, especially as they'd already been achieving this look with wider angle lenses on the previous films. Now to round out the lenses used for this movie, Dan Lawson went right back to Aerie for this one, utilizing Aerie's alpha anamorphic lenses to further accentuate that wide look to the film. Aerie's alpha lenses came out around 2021 and they were created specifically for larger format cameras and have a softer, more textured feel than their master anamorphic lenses. Making out of focus areas have more character and enhancing the overall edge fall off, resulting in better bokeh and pronounced highlights. A very good choice for a film looking for that epic, wide and colorful palette look. Speaking of, one of the key aspects of the John Wick films is the meticulousness of the color palettes they create throughout this series. 
It really transformed this genre of action-packed films when it first came out, from the typical dreary, gritty, take-themselves-too-seriously action flicks that all tried to copy the Bourne movies or other movies like Taken. Action films need a little bit of a fun aspect to them, and adding some more stunning visuals through the painting of each location with beautifully crafted color palettes and lighting just makes this a more enjoyable series to watch, especially in the case of John Wick Chapter 4. But the color palette alone is not the only thing that has helped John Wick stand apart from the movies like Taken or the Bourne trilogy. It's the cast and crew's dedication to stylizing and putting an intense amount of effort into the action sequences. Now, we talked a lot about the large format's wide look that John Wick films always have gone for, and that's not just for looks, but it serves a purpose for the action sequences as well. After the success of the Bourne trilogy injected that annoying shaky cam realism and quick cut action style that made it easier for actors to look more like they were, you know, fighting by a ridiculous amount of quick cut action sequences where you could barely tell what's going on. Take this for example. Yeah, anyways, John Wick was a breath of fresh air to this with highly stylized fight scenes, all mostly displayed in a wide format look. While you have your cuts in and out here and there in these movies, most action sequences in John Wick are long and drawn out and don't quickly cut between each movement, meaning you actually get to see more of the carefully crafted fight sequences and understand what's happening. This is by no means easy to do, and Lawson even mentions the incredibly hard work between the stunt coordinators, camera operators, Operators and the team lighting the scenes. They would have to rehearse fight scenes at half the speed to make adjustments before the time it came to actually film it. That is a hell of a lot more dedication to action sequences than just filming shots for quick cuts, and it's even further accentuated by a large format look or use of wide angle lenses as Dan Lawson used in John Wick 2 and 3. And it's a fascinating look into why this film uses large format cameras to its advantage, and it even forces them to make better action sequences at the same time. But maybe John Wick is not your cup of tea when it comes to films. Maybe you like the grittier, less perfect looking feel. Well, take a look at how The Last of Us aimed for imperfection in their lighting, cinematography, and overall look of their series here.